Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I have a video for you about the care of your beautiful Dracaena plants otherwise known as Sansevieria and there are so many different types, very different varieties that you can go out and buy to suit your space in your home. For example, I have in my hand here in front of me this beautiful Dracaena Cylindrica Lady Charm and this plant has put out another pup so there are two plants growing in one pot. So what I want to say about this is you can easily go in and split your mother plant from its pup, put them into two different pots and they will grow wonderfully. They grow on rhizomes in the soil and sometimes you're lucky enough to get a, a root system that isn't too thick and you can just go in and prune off the one from the other and then repot that in some dry soil to start with and let it acclimatize and then it will take off and be beautiful for you. This kind of arrangement, I love leaving the pups with the mother plant as long as you've got the space and as long as you like the design, the architecture of the plant, then I would suggest leaving them together because look at this, it looks like a bundle of fireworks and I really, really love that kind of design. Instead of just having one plant on its own, um, the effect here is absolutely gorgeous. So that is just one suggestion of how you can keep your lovely Dracaena looking gorgeous together. Another tip I have for you for your Dracaenas is, and this time I have my beautiful Dracaena Kirkii friends with me here. This uh, Dracaena looks a lot more like grass. Um, the leaves are much thinner um, and flat and curve a little bit in. They have this beautiful uh, kind of light green, dark green texture going on in them. They do have the ribboning going on in them, kind of like the Trifasciatus. And this plant, when I bought it, it was in a big uh, kind of ball of coconut fiber. So if I can show you in the bottom here, it is in coconut fiber. And what I did was I left it in that coconut fiber. I put it in a slightly bigger pot and put soil around the edges and some in the middle of the coconut fiber to help this plant get some more nutrients rather than just sitting in very, very dry coconut fiber. I mean, that was actually too dry for this plant because I found that I need to water this plant a lot more often than I do with my other Dracaenas. Um, it dries out very, very quickly and quite often some of the leaves in this plant will yellow out because of that. So at some point I need to get actually in and I want to repot this plant in a soil, which would be a kind of cactus-based soil, a soil that has uh, sand in it, grit in it, um, things that open up the soil, keep the soil soft and aerated, never a, a thick, compact um, mulch or compost or any kind of soil that compacts and holds moisture too long. That is not going to be good for the plants. The roots will rot out very quickly. Um, but this plant, since I put soil around the edge, is throwing out pups, as you can see here, here and here around the edges. But the thing about them is that they are having a hard time supporting themselves up because they're on the rhizomes that are on the top. And then when the leaves get longer, they flop over and flop out. The mother plant in the middle is doing very well, very green, staying nice and compact. But I do need to get on and put this in soil and get these pups place a little bit further down into the pot so that they can stabilize. So that's what I found with this plant here. So this plant, I will water a couple of times a week actually in this situation and I found it's very happy. But it's one of those uh, Dracaena that does like to be watered a little bit more. Remember that they're not all the same when it comes to watering. So remember that I will get another Dracaena and talk about watering now. So here I have my beautiful Dracaena trifasciata moonshine and this plant is growing very, very well for me. This plant is in some kind of very light, um, airy soil. It's in its uh, nursery pot, so I don't know exactly what it is, but it's very light brown and very airy and this plant is just taking off and it's growing thinner at the top here 
as the plant matures and grows taller, and this thickens out, as you can see here, and then it will grow out thin here, and that will thicken out. So these leaves, I know, are going to get really long, really tall. Maybe they'll reach the extent of my beautiful Dracaena trifasciata laurentii behind me here, which is over a meter tall. But this plant is doing very well. Um, I water this plant at least once a week, and I've found actually now that I water most of my Sansevierias at least once a week. I will get my water probe and I will stick it in and just test the soil. Mostly, I just give them a little bit of water around the top, kind of shallow watering. I don't water them through all the time. They seem to be fine with that. Um, of course, you can, if you're leaving your plant a little bit longer, take it out of the cover pot you have it in, because if it's in a nursery pot, it's got holes in the bottom. Take it over to your sink, thoroughly water it through. Leave the pot on the side and let that water drain out. And I mean, let all the excess water drain out before you put your plant back in the cover pot. Because if you collect any water at the bottom and this plant is sitting in it, you are going to rot the roots out very quickly. But it isn't as people are saying all the time, these plants can survive a longer period of drought but they don't enjoy it that much and it does affect their roots because their roots get so dry and brittle that they break off and crumble and the plant has left just a kind of little uh, amount of the root network that it normally would have otherwise if it was in a soil that was getting water through it regularly so that it can take up the nutrients it needs to grow and survive and to keep the roots uh, healthy. So at least once a week, I'm shallow watering this plant around the edge. And now and again, when I have more time, I will go and take my Dracaenas and I will take them over to the sink one by one. And I will thoroughly water them through and let that seep out. And then I won't water the plant again, maybe for a little bit longer time next time until it dries out again and then re-water. So the best thing is to let it dry out in between watering, but don't let it go for months on end without water if you want the best results for your plant. So now I have my beautiful Dracaena silver nymph in front of me and this plant is growing extremely long thin leaves like this. This is at least 60 centimeters long. And a plant like this is growing in a rosette in the middle. It's very solid and it's holding itself up. But I found because the leaves grow very long like this, that this leaf, when it wasn't being supported, um, starts falling over more and more and more. And I'm worried about it snapping off in the end. So I have this plant resting up against um, the wall in our indoor terrace garden so that it can keep growing up and growing out beautifully with a bit of support. It's got, it opens up in the middle of this plant, has a ridge, and then at the top, as it keeps growing, it's just like the normal cylindrical plants, round and solid, as it grows out, and then it opens up more. I don't know if you'll be able to capture that on the screen. So if you can see here, it has a ridge, and then up here, it becomes a solid piece, and that is where the leaf is growing out. So this kind of plant, and it's growing lovely new leaves in the middle, will keep growing. If it's happy, it will just keep growing and extending out its leaves. This is just going crazy for me. But um, you might have to, at some point, support them because they get too big for themselves. It's the same with my Dracaena trifasciata laurentii. That is also resting up against the window and the walls in the frame here. I had to turn it around because some of those were getting so long, they were getting too heavy for themselves and started falling over to the side and eventually they will just snap off. Now in the wild, that would be a good thing because that plant that falls over will actually be a rhizome that falls over to the side and a new plant will come up from it. And the leaves that are on the ground that maybe would um, rot away will become new nutrients for the next plant, right? But here we want to keep our plants up and beautiful. So I would suggest if you have a plant like this, you put it up against a wall where its leaves can grow out and look beautiful because you really don't want to go in and start cutting them off, especially when they're in a rosette because you will see all those stumps and it's not so nice to look at. And well, seeing how long they get would just absolutely be beautiful. So that's what I do with this beautiful Dracaena silver nymph. So now in front of me, I have my beautiful Dracaena cylindrica straight. And this is a grouping of plants that are growing right on top of each other. I mean, right next to each other in this pot. They're very happy, very stiff, very solid. 
and it would be a good idea to go in and just take these sometimes over to the bath and mist them or spray them over to get rid of any dust and dirt. I found with this plant that it is quite common for them to brown out at the tip um, and that could be due to it needing moisture or something like that. But as I look at this plant now, I haven't looked at it closely for a long time. I've noticed that these brown tips are actually starting to green out again. And I don't know if I can take this away, this, this white here. I can't, no, I can't get that off to show you properly, but I can see in under that it is starting to turn, boy, this piece came off. It is starting to turn green. So these are actually growing out again. So it looked like they were browning out and that was the end of it. But that I can see now is coming off. That was kind of like a protective layer. And this plant is growing into the new season now. So these are gonna get even taller now. I can see, they seem very happy, they're starting to green. But you know, with these, they're very solid, very hard. So if they get any knocks and bumps, they will get white patches on them. Very normal for this plant. Don't stress and fuss. Just enjoy the absolutely beautiful shape of your plant as it is. And accept these lovely white tops here. Just look at them like candles or like a kind of exotic crown with these little white uh, patches on the top. I love it. I love the way it is. And now I'm happy that I'm looking at it closer that I can see it's growing out because it's got lighter green patches on the top and it's starting to grow up. So that was just my care tip for this. This is something that happens very often. Don't think that you're just doing something wrong. It very often happens. And as I see now, this is something new for me. I can see it's pushing through new green growth through that now. So doesn't seem to be a problem at all. Now, in front of me here, I have my beautiful Dracaena Ehrenbergii Samurai. And it's the kind of cultivar that grows up on one stalk and all the leaves splay out from the middle. They grow up, as you can see, with this lovely tall one here as long as they want to go and then they fold over to the side and then the new one, there isn't one coming out yet, but a new one comes out the middle and that will go over to the other side and it will continue the cycle up. When I bought this plant, it was in a greenhouse where it was in a cold area and well, I really wanted this plant so I bought it anyway. I knew it was going to struggle. It went through its struggling phase and then it's bounced back. So what happened was the bottom leaves here, they mushed out, they browned out, they rotted because the plant was cold and it was sitting in water as well, which is just not good for these plants at all. So those um, rotted out and I was thinking, what am I going to do with this plant? Because it grows out of one central stalk. So it's just going to look horrible, right? I mean, I can't do anything. You can't take them away and put another plant in front of it and whatever. It's not loads of leaves growing out all over the place. It's on one stem. But I found that when those leaves started browning out, they started to harden off. And the plant decided to shed them by itself. So it started hardening a lot in the middle. And then I could help by pulling off these leaves down here. And that is why this plant is looking a little bit leggy. You can see here at the back. That is why this plant is looking a little bit leggy there. And the one leaf at the bottom was still happy and still going on with no problem. There was, there is another leaf here that started to get that kind of rot, but it stopped itself and it's turned gray and it's kind of calloused over and it looks good. So I know I'm not gonna lose that leaf and all the others are fine. This is a new leaf that came out and it's grown really, really tall. So this plant wants to carry on surviving, it's doing very well. But this, again, you're going to just have to cope with this. You're just going to have to accept this is the way the plant is. When it's one stalk, you can't do anything. If leaves are gonna rot out on a plant like this, um, if it dries out and it wants to shed that leaf, so be it. You're just gonna have to carry on like that. This leaf is healthy, so I can't get this leaf off. I could cut it and let it brown out and let it be on a kind of stalk, like a kind of starfish um, palm, <laughs> you could kind of say. But why? I just love letting these plants be the way they are. As long as it's healthy and it's surviving, I'm happy that it is different. I'm happy that it looks unique. I'm happy to see that it finds a way of surviving. Again, this plant is in a very small pot, has plenty of space for roots, doesn't need to be potting at all, and it's really doing well. You can see the leaves here are green, ridging. They have a lovely red edging. And look down here in the middle. It kind of looks like flames, if you can see that properly kind of looks like flames. 
Aren't they gorgeous? And as I said, you can see on this one here, that is where the original um, rock was taking off on all these leaves down here, but that has stopped and that leaf will survive now, I'm sure. But the rest, I'm just so pleased about it. So if that does happen, don't think, oh, my plants have gone, I'm just gonna throw it in the bin. No, let those leaves dry off, fall off, help to pull them off at the right time. Don't let the rot spread so you can cut them back, let it dry and then pull out anything that is rotting and you will save the rest of your plant. So that's just what I wanted to show you with a plant like this because it's absolutely gorgeous and I am very thankful that I found it and it's staying in my collection just like that. So now I have in front of me my beautiful Dracaena trifasciata golden Hahanii. And this little beauty, look at those leaves. Oh, they are golden, they are green, and they've got all the streaks going on in them. This plant had a pup in it, and I actually removed the pup and just kept the one plant here and it is growing out more leaves for me and it's very happy. This plant was actually repotted because I took the uh, pup out. So it's in a, it's actually in its same uh, nursery pot that it was in when I bought it, but it had a little bit of new soil around it and I actually put lecker balls on the top of this one. And it seems very happy. I water it the same as the others, um, once a week or so. Um, I just want to show you that sometimes you can get little marks on the leaves and so forth, and that is because they're sharp. So sometimes they hit themselves and marks come up, very normal. This plant I can see is in the stage of growing out more. You can see it's got thin on all of the tops. That is because it grows out longer and then it will thicken out. So this is actually getting bigger for me. It hasn't pulled out another pup as I see around the edges yet, but it probably will. Remember to spray and dust off your plants. They do get a little bit dusty. Um, this plant is up on a shelf in my indoor terrace garden with many of my other Dracaenas, uh, where it's quite a dark corner. I mean, it's, it's above a window um, and there are windows by the side, of course, but it's above the window in a corner that is a little bit more shade. So no indirect or direct light just the filtered light from the room. And this plant is doing very well. So what I want to say is that Dracaenas, Sansevierias do very well in uh, darker situations, definitely not in a room with no light, and definitely not in a room where it's so dark that you couldn't read a book yourself. These plants do need light. And the truth of these plants is they love a lot of light. Most of them, can be kept in direct light. And I wouldn't suggest direct light behind glass where you're intensifying the magnitude of the rays from the sun. But if they were out in your garden for the summer and so forth, they can cope with direct light. But if you've had them indoors in a shady area and you want to put them outside, you need to do it gradually. You can't put them from a shady area direct into burning hot sun because that will burn the leaves off like many other plants because they need to transition and they need to make a thicker layer to protect themselves to be able to be in the sun, okay? So not just from dark to light. Please remember that. Take it gradually. But these plants love bright indirect light if they're indoors. That is the absolute best for these plants and they will grow fast and they will grow thick and beautiful and long and however they grow in their different types and their different ways. But in a shadier area, they are probably going to grow, but very slow. So you'll be able to keep your plant more compact and small if you want to. So for example, this beautiful plant here behind me, if I kept that in a shady corner, it will be fine. It's already over a meter tall. I don't need it to get any taller, right? So that would be fine, but if you have a smaller plant and you want that to grow out quicker and thicker, you need to make sure you're giving it plenty of bright light, okay? But as I said, this has been in a corner where it's not that much light. I mean, there's light, so it's not somewhere without um, any filtered light coming through, but it's not very bright light, and she is growing for me. All the tips are growing out, lovely new leaves coming out in the bottom, so that shows this plant is happy in the lower light conditions. So now in front of me, I have my absolutely beautiful mass of my beautiful Dracaena masoniana, otherwise known as the whale fin, Sansevieria. And well, I have a lot of different plants coming up in this pot because there are a lot of rhizomes coming up. There are pups coming up. There are new leaves coming up. Um, the leaves that are already here are getting bigger and thicker. Look at this beautiful leaf, big and thick. 
look at this one over here, big and thick coming up and here and everywhere. Um, and behind you can see there's a pup coming up there. So there's lots going on in this pot. And that is why I wanted to bring this pot forth because I wanted to talk a little bit about propagation. Now, as I said, this plant is growing up in rhizomes in this pot. If I can bring it and tip it over. This plant is a good example to show this because there are lots of different um, rhizomes. And you can see them in this pot because the pot is very small um, and they're all just popping up everywhere. So I could easily go into this pot, um, take it out, kind of break up the soil a little bit, look what's going on, and I could probably either cut or just split the different rhizomes of the plants and put them into new pots and they will grow out and be beautiful. You can also take leaf propagations from these plants, as we well know, cut them at the bottom, and you can either put them in a jar with water. Um, make sure you keep that water very clean because they will rot out very easily if you do not do that. Maybe a suggestion is that you leave your leaf when you've cut it on the side and let it callous over for a couple of days and then put it in water or directly water, whichever way suits you, you can try and experiment. I would say, from my own experience, trying to propagate these Dracaena, these Sansevieria in water has not worked for me at all. Every single one. And I mean, I haven't done many and that's why. I've only tried to propagate my Dracaena trifasciata larentii in water and every single leaf has just rotted out for me. I've tried in plain water. I've also tried putting them so that they are in a sand soil mixed with water in a glass jar. So when the moisture goes down, you can top it up so that the plant can grow out roots into this uh, mixture, rotted out for me. I've let them callus over for a week and tried it, put it in the water, rotted out for me. So for me, it doesn't work. For many people out there, it works and it works wonderfully. I've also tried to propagate in soil. And if you're going to do that, you need to keep on top of spraying the top of the soil to keep the moisture on the top level, but not soaking that soil all the way through so that it just gets too uh, wet and gloggy because that will rot them out. So you've got to keep on top of it all the time. You've got to be around them all the time to spray and just keep that perfect amount of moisture so the roots go out straight into the soil and you have a beautiful plant. So for me, the best suggestion for propagating Sansevierias is going straight for the pup and cutting the rhizomes and having an already established plant with roots that you can put into a new pot. That will be your absolute best way and best chance of getting a lovely new plant. So in here, it will be very easy. There are so many rhizomes, there's so many beautiful new plants. I could easily go in and just prune one off and put it in a new pot and I'll be ready to go. But if I should take one of these lovely whale thin paddles, and cut it and put it in water, I would be so afraid that I'm gonna lose it. But as I said, I want to keep this growing as a big bush, so at some point I'm just gonna be upgrading the pot to a slightly bigger size all the time and let all these pups keep growing. I want a bush of this growing. I don't just want one paddle fin. And if I decide I want to do that, as I said, I can just go in and take one out and leave it as a statement piece if I decide to do that at some point. But at the moment, I don't have space for that. So I want to keep them as a statement piece, as a beautiful little forest of this beautiful Dracaena masoniana. So now I have in front of me my beautiful Dracaena trifasciata gold flame. And this plant is very happy and healthy because it has this powerful yellow color coming out and this beautiful dark green, again, in a very airy soil and it hasn't been removed from its nursery pot from when I bought the plant. Now this is another thing I want to talk about because many Dracaenas, when you buy them from the nursery, they're gonna be in small pots, they might be compact, they might not. But you really do not need to be going and repotting these plants in any way unless you really, really need to. I mean, if you're gonna be putting your plant into a different kind of display, if you really wanna put it into your lovely, beautiful pot and you've got good soil when you come home, fine, you can do it. These plants are very hardy, they can take it. But if you don't need to, I would suggest you do not take your plant out of its nursery pot for a good long time because they really do enjoy being pot bound. So you might as well leave the plant, if it's doing well like this and it's growing out new leaves like this is, 
Don't go in and fuss too much. Don't change it up. Don't change it around. It's doing well. This one I can see has so much space around the edges. Why would I need to change that pot? And I've got a beautiful cover pot here. So if you have the chance to just put your nursery pot in a cover pot of your choice, that would be the best thing to do and leave your plant. When your plant starts bursting out of the edges of its nursery pot, the plastic starts cracking open and the rhizomes are going mad because the plant wants to expand, that's your time to go and pot up your plant to another pot. But if you put this plant in this size into a pot that is much bigger with lots of soil, you are going to be increasing the chance of rotting out your plant by overwatering because the soil will retain a lot more moisture. But the smaller the pot, the smaller the amount of soil, the less chance of rot because the water is exchanged, taken up by the plant or evaporates much, much quicker so you'll be able to keep your plant happier. You just need to water it a little bit more often. But in a big pot, you can do it, but you really will need to be on top of that with your water gauge and check the soil and make sure it's not getting clogged down with water underneath where you can't see it, where the roots are, because down there, that is where they will rot. So my suggestion really is leave your Dracaenas in their nursery pots as long as possible and enjoy them as they are. Look at these lovely white pots. You can have any color you want, any style you want. Just leave them alone as much as possible and enjoy them because my plants are doing great because of that. I have not yet repotted any of my um, Dracaenas apart from the one that I told you about earlier. My Dracaena Kiki I friends which is kind of like grass and was in coconut fiber that wasn't soil and that's a different thing. If it comes in a coconut fiber that plant is going to need to be watered an awful lot because the water just drains through. And after a while, the plant's not gonna be very happy with that because it's not getting any nutrients from that either. So I put soil around the edge and that started pupping out around the edge in the soil. So that's the only plant that's kind of been upgraded a bit and put soil around. I will eventually have to do it with some of my plants as I showed you earlier. Some of them are in the smallest pots with hardly any soil and so forth. But as long as they're looking happy, I'm not doing anything. If I get a slight change in attitude, then I know I need to go and repot. And when you repot, remember a kind of cactus soil or your own mix of a potting mix where you can put sand in it and um, small pebbles or rocks or, you know, small stones and things just to open and aerate the soil, perlite, all sorts of different things. You can go online, you can check what many different people are using for soil for their plants, so many different ideas. Um, so, just make sure that the most important thing about the soil is that it needs to be aerating and free flowing for the water to be able to get through. Look at this beautiful plant, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is a beautiful Dracaena cylindrica and it's growing out in all different shapes and forms. I wanted to bring this plant forth because I wanted to talk about cleaning them and I mean they are for the most part quite easy to clean. They've got big leaves, you can take a cloth, a damp cloth and rub over the leaves, you can spray them. This plant has been difficult for me. I have taken it out to the shower and I've showered it a few times. I haven't got a cloth and rubbed over the leaves yet because they're kind of um, rough and they've got very deep ridges in them. So it looks dusty and dirty all over it actually. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but yeah, you can. Look, it's very dusty and dirty. Um, but for me, I just will keep spraying over with water. And at some point I'm gonna go in and, you know, go in and finally like kind of clean it off with just water and a cloth. But I don't wanna disturb it too much. It's got this lovely texture to it that I don't want to disturb too much. So I will get in and clean it uh, as much as I can. But I just want to say that uh, just go in and wipe over your leaves or spray them with uh, water or take them to the shower just to keep them as clear as possible so that the plant can photosynthesize and produce the chlorophyll it needs to survive. Because that is essential. I mean, these plants do actually grow quite quick and they do pop out quite quick in situations where they're happy. So this had obviously been somewhere where it was in the nursery and when they were just hosing over everything, it was probably down low and it was getting splashed with dirt and so forth. And it's really stuck to the leaves. And uh, because it's got this rough texture, it's hard to get that off, but I'm gonna just, as I said, get a cloth and go in and try and do that. So just basically do the same as you do with many of your other plants, mist them over, shower them, get a cloth and clean them, 
check them for pests. And that's another thing I want to say when I'm holding this plant here. None of my Dracaenas have pests at the moment. Cross fingers, they won't get any. Um, they don't seem to get them very easily where I live. I have seen and heard other places, maybe they can get different things, mealybugs and so forth, um, that can hide in the crevices and so forth in this plant. Just keep a close eye on your plant. If it does get any kind of bug, you can go and get yourself an ecological um, or, or organic kind of um, pesticide and spray over your plant. You can use all sorts of different uh, oils, neem oil, um, some other kind of oil um, mixes and use things that are as natural as possible instead of having to use poisonous um, pesticides um, that are harsh because you don't want to leave any marks on the leaves, you don't want to damage the plant or kill the plant. But um, you can use what is available around wherever you live if you should see any kind of bugs. Basically spray it over and keep it clean. You can also use washing up liquid mixed with water and then use that to rub off the leaves. That can clean them off as well and then dry that off and then shower it over. That would be a, something that can also be used. But um, not too much pesticide that gets down into the soil and damages your plant's roots and makes it upset, but just enough to get rid of your pests. But as I said, none of my Sansevieria here have pests, never have had. I've never had that problem here, but some places they do. Obviously, if you have your plants outside in the summer, they're going to be more prone to getting a lot of different insects and so forth, nesting in them or hiding in them or laying eggs and whatever. So you just need to keep an eye on them. Um, a good old spray over with water is one of the best things anyway, because that will knock off a lot of stuff. But again, if you get something that is much more difficult to get rid of, then you can use some kind of um, pesticide to clean them off. But this is a beautiful plant and has no pests. And none of my Dracaenas here have pests. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is I want to go back to my beautiful Dracaena trifasciata larentii because she is flowering out here and this is to do with the conditions being perfect for the plant. What is perfect for this plant? Nobody really, really knows for sure, but we know that these plants like bright and direct light. So this plant is in a window. So if I should just open this window for a second, just to give you a little view of the light that's coming in onto this plant. There you go, you can see there's a lot more light, natural light coming in. It reflects off the buildings on the other side and comes in onto my plant. I've had to close it for the sake of making the video. So this plant is in lovely, bright, indirect light and it's loving it. It's in its nursery pot, I haven't changed it. It's got plenty of space in there, it's popping out and there are lots of different plants. They must be sending signals to each other to bloom out and well, they're growing longer and longer and it's very happy. These are just the beginnings of the um, flowers. They come out as small white flowers in their bundles all over. And I've noticed around them, they get this kind of watery sap going on. They drips of watery sap all over them around them. So they're very, very happy plants. And those can be on the plant for a couple of weeks before they actually fade away and die off. So I'm very pleased about that. I can see a few more in the middle, but there's just a couple on the edge that we can see. They get very long. They come out the base of the plant. They grow into these long inflorescence, and then the flowers come out at the top. And I just, I just couldn't be happier. I'm so pleased about this. And that is why I wanted to get on and make my lovely Sansevieria Dracaena video now about a few care tips. If there's anything I've missed, if there's anything I should have said or anything you do, anything you know about, about these plants that would be very helpful for me and other people, please write your comments down below. I would absolutely love that because I really do want to share ideas and hear what you do to keep your plants happy. I would just say I'm not doing anything special for this plant to have made it flower out like this. Really, I'm not. My bedroom is actually quite dark and the only light this plant gets is the indirect light from the window and I water it through probably once a week. I water it through now once a week and I've just put some slow growing fertilizer on my Dracaenas now because it's the spring season. So that is what I've done with all of them 
And I would say in the spring season when your plants are starting to grow, they do like fertilizer. So you can either fertilize them with slow growing fertilizer on top of the soil that will just leach out when you water the plants, or you can give them a liquid fertilizer once a month, reduced um, amount compared to what it says on the bottle, just to make sure you're not over fertilizing. But if you fertilize your plants, you are going to see an explosion in growth in your plants, really an explosion in the summer seasons. And Basically, let your plant do its thing. So I really hope you enjoyed this video of talking about a few different aspects about Sansevierias, these wonderful renamed Dracaena plants. And that is another thing we must round off and remember. These plants, unfortunately, are not called Sansevieria again scientifically. They are now called Dracaenas, and we have to get used to that. And it's absolutely okay to carry on calling your plant Sansevieria because you know what? There are so many people calling so many plants, lots of common names, lots of synonyms, and why not if you want to? I try to, as much as possible, stick to the scientific names of plants just because I have different languages that I speak and all these plants have so many different common names that it's just too many names for one plant. So the easiest thing for me to do is use the scientific name so that you can go out and find the plant yourself and find the common name of the plant in your language, in your country yourself. Because I speak on a daily basis now, firstly Swedish because I live in Sweden, and then I speak Danish. I lived in Denmark for 13 years, so I speak Danish too. And I speak English, obviously. And I'm telling you, even just between Danish and Swedish and Norwegian, that I understand as well, the common names of these plants are different, they're not the same. So that is why I try my best to stick to the scientific names as much as possible. And I actually really like them. And the more scientific names I use, the easier it's getting for me to remember the names. They're not as difficult anymore. I mean, I thought it would be so difficult in the beginning because the names are so long, but many of these kind of names, the sounds go again. And many of them have meanings that kind of identify why the plant has that scientific name. And it's become so much easier for me. And I actually forget the common names now. So I just want to put that out there so you know why I use the scientific names in my videos for many plants. And then sometimes I'll interchange and I'll put um, common names in. And now we just have to get used to the fact that these uh, Dracaena are commonly known as Sansevieria, but are scientifically known as Dracaenas. So that's all I have for you for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to write any comments you have below, any suggestions for these plants and other videos that I can make for you. I'll be very happy for that. I'm very thankful for you for watching my videos. It really makes me feel so happy that I can keep you entertained and you're enjoying it. Please remember, you can do the things that I say, you can do the things you want, you can go online and research these plants yourself to get the best coverage, to make sure you get the right information from different sources so you can hear what the average kind of ideas of what you should do with certain plants is so you don't just take it from one source and think that is the way it should be. Because remember, we need to remember our microclimates in our homes and our countries and everything about our own situation is unique. So what one person says to you uh, in a video or in the real world may not be the same for everybody. So just please remember that. I am an amateur garden. I am not a professional in any way. So I am just having fun, sharing ideas and just wanting to entertain you and make you happy. So thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be uploaded. And I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.